I think it's changing quite uh, uh, dramatically. The, the challenge we have is definitional. What is environmental, social, and governance? What are those metrics, and how, is, how good is the data? And today, it's actually not very good. Um, so, you know, in, the, in 20 years ago, we were screening, uh, which I don't think is a particularly good policy, particularly in liquid global capital markets, which is where we're focused. Uh, but again, around the data itself, um, we need to get better at that if we're going to make, if we're going to be cogent in our arguments about uh, pricing and why ESG metrics can actually affect financial performance. We often call these non-financial factors that affect financial performance. As a fund, we're a liquid global multi-asset fund. We have used data science that we've built proprietarily to um, use that to integrate into our financial analysis across corporate and sovereign securities. And we are showing that that is a research edge, an informational edge. These metrics, if you can, if you can co correctly derive them, turf up information that otherwise you're just not going to find um, and allow you for better for por por portfolio management. So you're taking measures at your level, and in terms of uh, government or authorities' oversight and regulation of these different criteria, the European Commission just published a, a classification system that basically details what ac economic activities are green. Mm -hmm. uh, to your point about it so far lacking structure, is this new initiative a good idea? Look, I think any initiative is a good idea. Let's start poking holes in it. Um, so I'm not one to say whether it's good or bad. I haven't actually, I know all about it. I just haven't really gotten into the details. For me, what's important is what we've developed. And what we've developed is an empirically derived set of data, data that allows us to assess corporate and sovereign securities from an informational standpoint. So one of our partners is HBS professor George Serafin. He's probably the leading ESG authority globally. He proved out in 2015 that if you focus on these material ESG factors against liquid corporate securities, you can achieve 6% in accretive alpha. I took that study and applied it to sovereigns and found similar co predictive correlation. So we do believe at some point we're going to get there in terms of driving performance. Today, we're showing that it's informationally a great advantage. Uh, Peter, um, it, it sounds amazing and new and scientific, but in many ways, you, you're just doing old-fashioned groundwork, which yes. other people should have been doing. Are you saying there is a complete and utter lack of competence in the current batch of analysts who are supposed to be doing work like looking at water rights issues, looking at percentage of loans in floods? I would expect any analyst who is uh, doing its due diligence on a company before putting a recommendation that should be doing this stuff anyway. I would say they should as well. We consider it fiduciary responsibility, okay? Um, but unfortunately today that's not the case. Look, I'm not in the business of denigrating others to promote my case, but I will say that I don't believe that people are rigorous enough today. I think if you're screening, for example, which most of the market is doing today, it's the heretofore known, uh, called SRI, it's not rigorous. Mm -hmm. Saying we just don't do those things and therefore you know, our research is uh, better than others or these are the securities we should select. You've got to do your work. And that's what is involved when you're integrating these metrics. And you've got to really get involved in, in identifying the right metrics in the first place. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.